Welcome back for another edition of the Chettis Berry Show. It's brought to you by New Creation Construction. And I got to tell you, this is a good one. We could talk about this here. Absolutely. You, you spoiled two homecomings. I guess we're the homecoming crash. That's what it is. <laughs> and on top of that, you guys had something special. You went to Atlanta, clock yep. Atlanta to play, but you did something special with your team. Yes, we were able to, um, you know, take our team to the College Football Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. And what a great time for the young men to be able to experience something outside of just the, the normal going to the hotel and doing the meetings and things of that nature. We wanted to break the monotony. And I thought those guys deserved it. They've been working hard and been persevering through the whole season. So we were able to take them to the Chick-fil-A College Football Hall of Fame. And what a great experience. Those guys really enjoyed it just to see the smiles on their faces. They were very appreciative because a lot of them have never been before. Mm -hmm. And to be able to see the history of not only college football in general, but HBCU uh, the history of college football with the with the invention of the shoulder pads to the helmets to the equipment, how the things just how the game has transformed over the years. It was a great experience for our young men. I'm sure they appreciated it. But what about for you as well? Had to be a special treat for you too, coach. Absolutely. And being, being from the metropolitan Atlanta area, I've never been there myself. And it was awesome, man, just to be able to see the just the different uh, trophies and just all the different things that that, that uh, venue is able to offer, man. And our guys are really appreciative. And I'm just grateful for the people that made it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the guys that made it happen and the groups that made it happen, that was a great thing for our young men to be able to, not only our players, but our coaches to be able to experience that as well. That's a great thing. So you, you recommend that for us to make that trip? Oh, absolutely. It'll be, it'll be worth your while. Let's do it. No, no, that's the money so I could go. <laughs> Because <laughs> it costs. It definitely costs. <laughs> there it is. But but it's worth it, though. Absolutely. It definitely is. worth it. It is. It is. All right, so let's get into it. We got another victory. We, we beat Clark Atlanta 24-21 in an mm -hmm. exciting game, and then also another exciting end to this one as well. Absolutely. It went down to the wire. You know, we, we started up, you know, we took the opening lead, and uh, they were able to tie it, and, you know, we went into the half 7-7. Seven seven. But, you know, the guys were really resilient. They played really, really hard most of the game. Um, you know, we made some plays. We were able to establish some good things on offense, defense, special team. And I think more than anything, I'm so proud for the, for the coaches and the players because, you know, this is one of the games we put it together on all three phases. And as uh, we always talk about it being good on offense, being good on defense, and being good on special teams. And I think we were able to do that this past Saturday. Outstanding. All right, so we're coming to you inside the Tiger Den. This is the locker room where it all gets started for these guys. Absolutely. This is where you stand and you give your speech? Absolutely. That's right, come on, give, give us a little bit what you say. <laughs> you know, we're the team. We're getting fired up. What do you say to these guys? You getting ready for another game coming up. You got another game. What oh, do yeah. we say? Oh, yeah, we're just getting ready. Get their mindset ready to go. Just looking them all in their eyes and getting ready to go. And let's go get 60 minutes of rocking and rolling, baby. All right. Oh, yeah. That fired me up. I'm ready to get this show started. <laughs> How about you? All right, we're going to get into the show and get to the highlights that's happening with this game. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's start things off in the first quarter. It seems as though it's pretty much a defensive battle at this point, mm -hmm. right, Coach? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. There some good defenses playing ball. We're moving the ball up and down the field, but ultimately at the end of the day, we weren't able to get in the box in the first quarter. All right, so that's pretty much the first quarter. We jump into the second quarter. You guys still driving with this ball. Eric Phoenix, pick it up. I tell you what, Phoenix had a great drive on that. You know, we were taking the ball down the field. And then a couple of young men that's been on our team hadn't really made a lot of plays this year. But uh, starting with Eli Watson, he made a couple big catches on that drive. And we were able to move that ball. Eric Phoenix was able to hit Darius Fallon on a big gain as well. And we were able to uh, culminate that drive with a touchdown to Billy Pierre on a wheel route for a touchdown. That was his first catch of the season, not only first catch, but his first touchdown of the season as well. 95 yards, get into the end zone, seven up, mm -hmm. Tigers. Seven up, we ready to rock and roll. We're up, we got the lead, um, and now it's time for our defense to come play some ball. All right, Tigers kick it off. They get a great drive. They get down to the two-yard line. Something big happens. Our defense really, really stepped up. Uh, Kevin Ross was able to get a strip uh, and fumble, help, caused them to fumble, and uh, Fern Romero was able to scoop it up, so we were able to keep those guys out of the end zone. All right, and then comes up from here. Not too much goes down, but Clark Atlanta, they miss a long field goal. We're still up 7-0 late into that second quarter, and then here we go. Let's talk about what happened with Phoenix. Well, we, we, we did a, do an ill-advised throw. Uh, we probably should have threw the ball out of bounds. He was scrambling, rolling to his left. He was close to the sideline, and he tried to throw the ball across his body, which we always tell him to uh, avoid from doing that, and he was – uh, unfortunately, he was he threw an interception and put them in great field position. Now our defense got to play play ball from a bad position. 
Yeah. Well, they go on to score on this one from the interception. So now the game is tied, tied. We're pretty much near the, well, let's just say nothing really else happens in mm -hmm. that uh, first mm -hmm. half of the game. Mm -hmm. We go into the locker room 7-7. Seven, seven. Your thoughts up to now as to the way your team is playing up against Clark Atlanta? I mean, like I told the guys in the locker room, you know, I love how they were playing. I mean, they were, they were moving the ball uh, on offense and they were, you know, playing some good ball on defense, but we can't have those plays, those self-inflicted niggas, those sins that I talk about that put us in bad positions. And we definitely don't want to put our defense in bad positions. But I just told them, look, guys, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, although it's 7-7, seven seven, I always tell them in the, at halftime it's 0-0. Zero, zero. We got to come up with the right mindset. It's 30 more minutes. They were ready to go. They were eagle. They, were, they knew that we were going to get the ball first. You know, that's what I told them. We'll have an opportunity to get the ball first, and we want to take that open and drive down for a touchdown. So that's always our mindset, and the guys had the right attitude once we left the locker room. Something you left out, too. Our defense was played lights out, and we stopped them in that first half, but we're coming back to the second. Can I talk like you? <laughs> that's right. It sounds like me. Lights out. That's lights right. out, but we got that's the right. second half to go on this game. <laughs> what we're going to do is take a quick break, and we're going to come back with more of the Chenis Berry Show. Lights out in the first half, but that's okay. You know what else is happening? we got assistant coach spotlight. That's brought to you by Lexington Medical Center. We're going to do that next, coach. Let's do it. You can talk like me on the break. Go ahead. Say, we'll be right back with more of the Coach Chenis Berry Show. Hey, we'll be right back more with Coach Chenis Berry Show. Brought to you by New Creation Construction. Boy, I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> In our state, team rivalries run deep. Sometimes our fans might not always agree. But South Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina. It's time to come together off the field. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Vaccines are safe and effective. And they're our best shot at victory. Don't wait until it's too late. Learn how to protect yourself and your family. At scdhec.gov slash vaxfacts. Protect your family, your friends, your neighbors, the people who care for you. Save a life. Wear a mask. Welcome back to the Coach Chenis Berry Show. It's brought to you by New Creation Construction. And, of course, we're going to get into the second half highlights. But first, <laughs> we got to also highlight some of your coaches who do some Absolutely. great things. And we Absolutely. do this every single week. And That's this right. one is brought to you by the Lexington Medical Center. Eric Miller, he's your DFO. He's my director of football operations. He does so much uh, things behind the scene, and we're grateful to have uh, Coach Eric Miller as our DFO. All right, let's take a look. My name is Eric Miller, and I'm the director of football operations here at Benedict College. Uh, I'm going into my 10th year coaching and working with both collegiate and high school programs. I've had an opportunity to coach at two prestigious powerhouses in the state of Georgia, high school, as well as on the college level, at the Division I Presbyterian College, and then most recently for one of the top JUCOs in the country, Georgia Military College. I'm currently in my second year here at Benedict College. What is a director of football operations? So some of the roles that I take on within the program are first and foremost, just facilitating a lot of the day-to-day -day duties that the head coach doesn't have time to or needs assistance with handling. That includes working with academics, uh, working with recruiting, both on campus and off campus, it involves handling a lot of travel as well as the logistics that go with that. And it even includes directing and organizing and facilitating football camps in the off season. One of the biggest things that I've learned is a lot of times you hear coaches talk about time management. Well, in the job and the role that I play, not only is time management key, but prioritizing the day-to-day -day that activities that take place. Most of the time, there's always something of great sense of urgency that has to be done. And in reality, there's only 24 hours in a day. So one of the things that I've really learned about myself during this time in the program is just how to prioritize what really is most urgent and needs to get done in order for the program to move forward. The type of culture shifts that have taken place within this program since we've been here uh, at the beginning of 2020 um, have been tremendous. Uh, when you take a look at social media, our presence on there, 
is second to none at the Division II level. Uh, we've seen our presence within the state of South Carolina, um, as well as Florida and Georgia, and even North Carolina, just grow exponentially. We get a lot of feedback from the local coaches about how we get in and out, and we're active in the high schools. But one of the biggest things we do is just bringing in a culture of family. We try to be together. We try to do things together. We try to bring a competitive atmosphere. One of the biggest things that Coach Barry preaches in this organization is how we're trying to run our D2 program like a Division I FCS level program. And we try to do that in all aspects. Um, the culture is no different. You'll see the signs posted on the walls, in the locker room, just embracing what it is we're trying to bring to the table and the changes we're trying to make within the program. And the kids are really feeding off of that. I think we've made tremendous strides. Uh, knowing that we're coming off of a, a season in which we didn't play due to COVID and just finally getting everybody together, understanding that we have a lot of young players, a lot of transfers, and a lot of coaches, first-time coaches on the college level, getting that experience together will really help take us into the future. I think we've been in a lot of close battles. The team has been very, very competitive, and there's a lot of bright spots, as well as players understanding what their role is and what it takes to compete for a championship. And I think we're going to see that much, much sooner than later. I'm Coach Eric Miller. Go Tigers. That was your assistant coach spotlight, Lexington Medical Center. Right now it's time to get back into the second half highlights. All right, Clark Atlanta kicks off to us. We don't do much with it. We give it to them through a what? Fumble? <laughs> what happened? A fumble. We threw a hitch uh, to one of our receivers, Jaden Thomas, and uh, their DB did a great job and got his hat on the football, and we turned it over in bad field position. I mean, you're talking about put our defense in a bad predicament, and uh, uh, they were able to go in and score and, and take the lead on this 14-7. to seven. Right, still 14-11-49 uh, is left in this uh, third quarter. Mm -hmm. But then we get the ball back. Mm -hmm. This is where the magic happens. Oh, yeah. Big O? Oh, yeah. Omarion Coleman, mm -hmm. OC. We start feeding him the rock, and that's when our running game really, really uh, started hitting a full head of steam and between the offensive line, tight ends, and, and OC. We call him Omarion. I mean, his name is Omarion Coleman, but we call him OC. I mean, he toting that rock down that, that drive, and we were able to take that ball all the way down the field with mostly runs and uh, tied the score up 14-14. Yeah. Matter of fact, Marion, he had 108 yards, and most of them was on that drive right there. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was toting that rock, man. He was he was determined, you know. Uh, he was breaking through arm tackles. He was hitting the hole hard. He did a great job. Not only did he, did he run the ball well, but he caught the ball well as well. So we're super excited about OC, man, and I think he had a he had an amazing game that uh, versus Clark Atlanta University. Clark Atlanta gets the ball back. They go three and out. They don't do much with that possession. Mm -hmm. Tigers take the ball. What happens? Oh, man, we, we still toting that rock, man, giving that thing to OC, and he's doing a great job, and we were driving the ball down the field. And uh, we went on one of our uh, run pass options, uh, and we were able to hit Steve Campbell on a nice glance post for a touchdown. And he, not only he scored that touchdown, he scored the touchdown on the drive right before that. So at this time, we're, we're getting the ball to big wide receiver. He's about 6'4", 210 pounds, and we just want to put the ball in the playmaker's hands. All right, yeah, we go ahead 21-14, minute 49 left in the uh, third quarter. Clark Atlanta gets the ball back. They march it down into the fourth quarter, and they score, and they tie it up 21-21. But we start to stumble a little bit with lots of penalties. Yeah, we, we, we start shooting ourselves in the foot. I mean, we were moving the ball, and uh, every time we get a big play, it would, you would see that yellow flag on the ground. So, you know, um, you know we were able to put the, like I say, we were moving the ball, but, you know, we start shooting ourselves in the foot with those self-inflicted negatives. And, and we can't do that to be a really, really good football team that we want to be. So, you know, at this point, like I say, man, our, our guys are, are, are playing ball, but we keep getting penalties to put ourselves in bad positions. We got a lot of back-to-back -back three and outs in this game. We're into the fourth quarter. It's only like about a, a minute and a half left in this game now. Coach, what are you thinking? 21-21. Hey, 21-21. We get the ball back uh, after a couple three and outs. And, you know, our guys, like I tell them all the time, we practice these situations every Thursday in practice. And uh, we call it two-minute drill. We knew how many timeouts we had left. And we just tell the guys to just stay resilient. Just play the next play. It's enough time. We just have to have the mindset of first down, touchdown. We don't worry about the big play. We just got to keep moving the chains. And our guys have that, that attitude as we took it down. And we were able to get a couple good plays. And then we hit Steve Campbell on a big third down. It's like third and five. Steve Campbell ran a shallow route was able to convert on that third down. And then we just put the ball in Eric Phoenix's hand at this point. 
He's taking the ball down the field. We're mixing up a couple passes and design quarterback runs as well as running runs to our running backs as well. We were able to take the ball all the way down the field. So at this point, he had ran it out of bounds at about the seven-yard line, and we had still enough time to run another play. So we ended up calling one of our quick game plays. He ended up throwing a slant route to Jaden Thomas. Ball's on the two-yard line. We burn our last time out. Then we bring Rigoberto to Noco out. Three this, seconds left. Three seconds. This is all you got. 21-21. That's it. And, you know, like I say, we practice these situations all the time. We brought Rig out there. I thought they were going to call the timeout to freeze him. They didn't call the timeout. We made sure that our operation was right. A good snap, good hold, good protection. And Rig put it through the uprights for a big kick. We seal the game with a victory, 24-21. Go Tigers. Tigers with the win. That's the way it ends for Clock Atlanta's homecoming. You spoil another one, as we talked mm -hmm. about. And uh, another great game for the Tigers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But we're still not done yet. Not done. Not done. We got one more. Absolutely. And we're not done here either. And that's the way it ends right there. 24-21. Tigers mm -hmm. get this game. Spoiling another homecoming. This one for <laughs> Clock Atlanta. But, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you got a whole bunch of players that could be the Prisma Health player of the game. Mm -hmm. So let's mention all these players. Oh, man, we, we talked about this last night in our team meeting. You're talking about Steve Campbell. Steve Campbell played lights out. He had some big plays, some big catches, some big third down conversions, and he also was able to put it in the box twice for two touchdowns. We were excited about him. Huh. I tell you what, Eric Phoenix, man. Eric Phoenix, I mean, Eric Phoenix threw 79% completion percentage. He threw three touchdowns, almost 300 yards passing, and he also ran the ball well, and he was not sacked. Not one time this past Saturday. You know, he did an awesome job. SIAC uh, Player of the Week, too, by the way. He was just named the SIAC Offensive Player of the Week, so we're super excited for Eric Phoenix and his accomplishments. But, you know, I would say, uh, well, hands you, down. You, you got to go with uh, Rick. Rick, Rick yeah. also did some things, so you, you got to yeah. mention him. You can't leave him out. Yeah, Rick also, yes. He was three for three on his extra points, and he was able to make a big game-winning field goal to win the game. But, like hold I up, say, he's also the SIAC Special Teams Player of the Week. Oh, yeah, so we, we got a tough, tough choice to be able to figure out who's going to be. Prisma Health Player of the Week. Coach, I'm going to step back and let you say it. This week's Prisma Health Player of the Week goes to Omarion O.C. Coleman. I tell you what, he's toting that rock, man. He had 19 carries for 100 plus yards, our first 100 yard rusher since game one. So we have to give it to him because it was because of our running game, being able to get that running game really, really going this past Saturday was able to help us uh, win and seal this football game. All right, man, I tell you, this was a tough one this week. Oh, yeah. A lot of key players, yep. but all of them deserving. Absolutely. Great Absolutely. game for all of them, though. Absolutely. Yeah. They all did an awesome job. And again, big team, little me, and those guys did a guy, good job of winning uh, their, their situations and able to give us an opportunity to win a football game. Yeah. All right. Listen, we're going to come right back with more of the Chennis Berry Show. It's brought to you by New Creation Construction. Right here. Hold tight. Right back. People have the power to make a lasting impact through acts of kindness, compassion, and strength. They inspire us to innovate and educate, to do more than we ever thought possible, to help you be your healthiest you. Prisma Health, inspired by you. Welcome back to the Coach Chennis Berry Show. It's brought to you by New Creation Construction. It's time now for the Player Spotlight. This is brought to you by Prisma Health. Who is that, Coach? Defensive end, Lubert Donales. Amazing football player, and we're glad he's on our squad. Let's check him out. My name is Lubert Donales. A um, little bit about myself is uh, I was born in Puerto Prince, Haiti. I uh, moved to Naples, Florida at the age of nine after a huge earthquake and uh, got introduced to the sport of football at around middle school. Got an offer to play college at NAIA, Central Florida, Southeastern, and uh, opportunity to open up here at uh, Benedict. And uh, 
I, it was a decision that uh, I prayed and fasted on, and uh, that's how I came here to Benedict College. This program is definitely special. Um, the culture here and the environment is different. The coaches really um, pour into you on and off the field, getting you ready for life after football. And uh, they try to instill a lot of discipline and a lot of integrity in us. Um, that's where the dig deep, co dig deep comes from. So uh, I'd say this program is definitely special, especially with the environment. One of my me favorite memories from this season would definitely be from the past game, Clark, um, with the last minute finisher with Rick kicking the field goal to um, win it as time expired. Definitely because it was just such a roller coaster for us. Um, we knew that it was a game that we needed to win uh, in order to continue finish out the game, finishing out the season strong. And uh, it was just a great team win. One culture shift that I've noticed um, with the coaching staff is uh, the emphasis on discipline, how much the coaches pour into us and uh, how they've uh, instilled in us. Um, even with the little things like such as Go Tigers, how we greet and say goodbye to each other. That's one of the huge thing and it's like kind of part of our DNA now. Being able to experience the National College Hall of Fame uh, was an amazing experience as a team and for me personally as well. Um, I've never been in a, I guess you could say, a facility like that. And it was uh, great to see like the HBCU sections and uh, all the guys that have come before me pretty much. One quote that kind of stuck with me is uh, pay now, play later which is uh, do the things. For me, it means to do the things that, um, the hard things that God, school, football are asking of me right now in order to enjoy the fruits of it later, in order to have fun later. I enjoyed my first year so far at Benedict. Uh, the competition level was definitely uh, leveled up a little bit from uh, my previous school, but uh, um, it took me a while to get used to, but um, I think I've got a lot more to learn and uh, I'm excited about my future here at Benedict and the, uh, the program as a general. I'm Lupe Dinellis. Go Tigers. Lupe Dinellis, that is your player spotlight brought to you by Prism Health. And right now we got to talk about this game you got coming up this weekend. Mm -hmm. It's the final home game here at Charlie W. Johnson Stadium against Lane College Dragons. Your thoughts, coach? Tell you what, uh, Lane College has been playing some good ball this year, man. They're, they're six and three right now currently. Uh, they're doing some good things offensively, defensively, special teams. We got our hands full. You know, our young men are already ready, uh, working on our scout reports, getting ready for a good football team that's coming in here to Charlie Johnson Stadium. But our guys will be prepared. They're chomping at the bit. It's senior day as well. So we're able to send our seniors out with a bang. And uh, we have uh, probably about 13 seniors uh, total that, that'll be getting a chance to walk and have their last game played at Charlie Johnson Stadium. And uh, we want to send those guys out with a bang and send them out as winners with their last time playing here at home. All right, that game is going to be uh, kicking off at 2 o'clock. And again, here, Charlie W. Johnson Stadium. You can get your tickets online, uh, benedicttigers.com or benedict.edu. Or you can even go to the athletics office. What street is that on? Say it out loud. Laurel Street. It's Laurel Street. That's where you get them. He's like trying to whisper stuff like that. Don't you know how old he is? <laughs> All right, Coach, listen, of course, it's been a great season, but we're not done yet. No, not we're going to get over this hump and right. knock this game out and make Absolutely. it all happen. Absolutely. We're super excited for it, man. We can't wait till Saturday, 2 o'clock. Be there. Make sure everybody's in attendance and uh, help us bring this win home on our last game at uh, Charlie Johnson State. Hey, listen, also, thanks for sharing the video and stuff with the trip, you guys, to the College uh, Football oh, yeah. Hall of Fame. We couldn't get there, but we saw it through you guys' eyes. Oh, we had a great time. What a great experience for our young men and our coaching staff. All right, we're going to see you in the next edition of the Coach Chennis Berry Show, brought to you by New Creation Construction. Thank you for watching. We'll see you at the game Saturday, 2 p.m., Charlie W. Johnson Stadium. Come on, let's go. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. Give me a helmet, Coach. <laughs> Back with more. <laughs> go Tigers. We want to say thank you to our sponsors of the Chennis Berry Show, New Creation Construction, Prisma Health, Department of Health and Environmental Control, Lexington Medical Center, Advantage Sport and Fitness. Thank you for supporting Benedict College Athletics.